Hey, good evening. Uh, Dan Fitzpatrick here, stockmarketmentor.com. Um, just a quick video here on Apple. Um, for members, make sure that you check out the um, over the weekend, the session that I did. I talk a lot about uh, the market, where we are, uh, as well as uh, what I expect for the future. So I uh, put a lot of time into it. It was 40 minutes long. Uh, I think it's important that you uh, that you get that information. Um, also, over the weekend, I talked about um, some of the AI stocks and what I expected, um, and they're playing out just as we thought. So, and by the way, if you're uh, not a member, oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to talk about being a member of Stock Market Mentor at the front of the video. Somebody bitched me out about that, about uh, asking for a membership right at the top of the video when what I should have done is given all the information first. So I'm not even going to do that. Just do your thing, man. Whatever works for you, works for me. Uh, what I want to talk about here with Apple is that um, an analyst came out. I think it was Goldman, but I can't say for sure fact check me on that and let me know, um, gave a $200 price target on Apple. And I can't say whether that'll happen or not. Uh, hey, why not? Uh, anything could happen. That would be a new high. They gave their price target and I'm sure that there are fundamental uh, reasons for that. Fine. Um, the chart doesn't really support that. However, um, charts often don't support things that happen in the future. That's why they're charts as opposed to crystal balls. What we're looking at here though is this three-day move. It's a kind of a typical three-day rule which I go into more detail in, uh, in tonight's video um, for members. But the idea here is that the first day happened on Thursday, big move higher on volume. Um, second day, even more volume. And then finally, um, today, we get this gap up on that news. Oh my gosh, Apple's going to two, uh, to 200 bucks, and it did not follow through. There was really no, no push through at all. Uh, gaps up, runs a bit higher um, during the day, and then finally tapers off to where people that bought today are kind of wondering, why, why did I buy today? Because I'm losing money on a stock that just got an upgrade of 33% from where it was. Um, and so what, what I would expect Apple to do at this point is kind of do some backing and filling. Uh, I would not be interested in buying this stock now. I think this is the price range. Uh, there are two entries that I think are worth taking if you're an Apollonian here. The first one is if it does pull back to test the 50, that's when you could start a position. Absolutely not here. Don't even think about it um, because, and that you know, this is also why if you're buying here, you're risking the stock going all the way back down. So where do you put your stop? Down there. If instead you say, well, I like Apple, but I'm going to wait to buy on the breakout, that's actually an easier trade because the only reason you're buying is because you think the stock's going to continue higher. Therefore, you put your stop right down here, and the only way your stop will be hit is if you're wrong. Now, personally, I think in this market, you have a greater chance of being wrong if you're buying a breakout, because these flipping breakouts just haven't been working lately. There's a lot of sell into strength. If, however, you wait to buy on a pullback, then your chances of making money are better for the simple fact that the stock has been trading in a box. So you want to try to buy it at the bottom of the box and then sell it up at the top of the box. So that's how I would trade Apple, okay? Um, hope you're having a great evening and have a massively awesome week.